Paul on the bowl and kissed in the dark. Paul on the bowl. Nobody is perfect, everybody can improve. Hi, I'm Statsbloke and welcome to Better World of Warships. In this series, I'm going to help you to become a Better World of Warships player, no matter where you start from, whether you be a beginner, an experienced player, whether you consider yourself to be good or bad, and I'm gonna help you to improve by focusing on specific aspects, technical, psychological, theory, practice, of your World of Warships gameplay to make you a better player. In this first lesson, there's not going to be a lot of World of Warships. We're going to go into what you need in order to improve. And I don't mean what you're doing with your fingers and your eyes and your brain while you're playing. I mean the approach that you take to learning in the first place. Now, you're going to need three things. You're going to need theory, you're going to need metrics, and you're going to need action. You're going to need to actually do something. Now, what do I mean by theory? I mean the mechanics of the game how the game works, how the ships work, how spotting works, how angling works, armor, trajectories, ballistics, all these kind of things. You need to understand intimately how those things work and the more you understand, the more knowledge you have, the better you can apply that. But you have to apply it. Number two, you need metrics. You currently play at this level, you want to get to this level, how do you get from one to the other? Well, if you just blindly go into games and change things at random, you may improve or you may get worse, but you won't necessarily know why you improved. So you need to be able to measure. You need to be able to have metrics. So you need to be able to focus on specific things that you're going to improve and then watch them over time to see whether the strategies that you've changed, the things you've changed, have actually been effective in the game. A really good tool for metrics is statistics. Now, you need to be careful with statistics because they don't tell you the whole story. They're just a... A product of the way you play but they are a product of the way you play and if you change something your statistics are going to change if you improve they're going to improve if you get worse they're going to get worse and there are lots of different statistics that you can use and there are lots of different sources that you can use to monitor them and to get them from now fortunately wargaming have been fantastic in in that they've provided the players with an api uh, for all of their games i think so certainly world of tanks um, and uh, world of warships world of uh, warplanes um, and a lot of the sites, including the official profile pages on the Wargaming website uh, and in the game, are actually based on that API. Um, and that API shows you a lot of different information. It shows you things like your win rate, your average damage, um, your number of kills per battle, XP, um, and even goes into individual ships and ship classes, um, how you're performing in each of those. Now, um, you can use those statistics to monitor changes. So let's say we're thinking about angling. So if you're angling badly in a battleship or a cruiser particularly, um, it probably means that your survivability is not going to be very good. You're going to be dying quite quickly because you're going to be taking quite a lot of damage. So um, you might be looking for battle survived, for example. You might be looking to survive to the end of a battle more often, which is probably a good indicator that you've angled properly and, and you're not taking big hits. Um, you might use that in combination with potential damage. The higher your potential damage, um, the more shots you've had aimed at you, torpedoes and shells, um, that you've survived. Um, because, of course, the longer you survive, the more potential damage you can rack up. And particularly in, say, a battleship, you get to use more charges of your heal before you sink. Um, whereas if you get one-shotted really quickly by an enemy Montana over the other side of the map because you're going broadside, um, you'll die really quickly and your potential damage will be low, your survivability will be low. And so you can actually monitor those changes. And I would encourage you, when you identify the thing that you want to change, to have a think, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you some clues if I can in the lessons, but have a think about what statistics and what metrics you might use to go with that particular change to allow you to monitor it. How will you know? You might have a feeling that it's working, but how will you actually know? Obviously, win rate is going to be the main one. You're going to be looking to improve your win rate. Otherwise, why are you bothering? Um, but you can use some of those other more uh, detailed metrics behind it, some of the more detailed statistics to, uh, to back up that feeling of improvement or, or not. And you may find that a change makes things worse. 
um, and you need to understand why that is. The third thing is action. You're going to need to actually do something. It's all very well sitting there saying, oh, I'm going to improve, or oh, I'm not happy with how I play. Unless you actually change something about what you're doing in a focused, targeted way, you're probably not going to improve. You may just improve generally over time just with you know, general learning and experience, but, but if you just want to see real results, you're going to need to focus on specific things. So we're going to talk about how to actually change things in a controlled manner. And in each of the following lessons, um, for that specific mechanic or skill, I will uh, focus on how exactly you're going to change those things. Now, if you watch a load of videos about World of Warships and you get a lot of information very quickly about mechanics, and this is particularly common probably for new players, where they're learning a lot about all the different ships and HE and AP and armor and angling and all those kind of things. If you try to absorb too much of that too quickly and apply it too quickly, you're probably not going to see very good results. What you need to do is focus in on one thing, which is why I'm going to split up these lessons into focused subjects. And then what I want you to do is just have one thing at a time. Choose one thing, the one thing that you want to improve, the one thing that interests you, the one thing you think you would find easiest to improve. Focus on that one thing. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the word, whatever it happens to be, it might be speed, maneuvering, angling, cover, smoke, whatever it happens to be, and you're going to write that word on a post-it note or a bit of paper or a whiteboard near your desk so that it's visible to you while you're playing, back of your hand maybe even, and you're going to refer to that and you're going to use that as a mnemonic, a, a memory aid while you're playing uh, to remind you to keep focusing on what you've just learnt, because otherwise you'll be absorbed in the game and you'll forget and you'll play like you always do. You need to actually change something and that's going to help you to change. So once you've chosen the thing you want to change, it needs to be really specific. Write it down on a post-it note and stick it somewhere near your screen. Now, as you start to implement that one thing, it's going to become more and more natural to you. So let's say you're working on angling, particularly in battleships. So you start off by thinking really actively as, you, as you're starting a game, how, how is my angle looking compared to the other ships, particularly the other battleships? Um, and you start to become aware that maybe you're too flat or you're too steeply angled. And so you're going to change that. And that's going to become more and more of a habit as you do it more and more often. And so you're not going to need to think about it quite as much. It's going to become more automatic. As that starts to happen, as you feel that you're getting better at it, you can introduce another specific topic and then you focus more on that one. You're still going to have the other one in your mind. It just needs polishing, but it's mostly there. And so you might end up with two or three of these on the go at once, but no more than three. Absolutely no more than three. So I'd expect you to have three post-its on your screen with three words and no more. If you find that you're trying to focus on four or five things, it's not going to work. So have that rolling three where you put the first one in, when you get comfortable with that one and you think it's working, you add another one, and then you add another one. And by the time you get to number four, number one is completely second nature and you are doing it. If you haven't done that, you've either got to forget that one for now, stop trying to do it, or you need to persevere and don't add in number four until you've got number one sorted. Okay, I hope that helps. It's a really quick introduction. Um, I'm going to remind you about those uh, three things you need, uh, the theory, the metrics, uh, and the action as we go into these specific topics. Um, but hopefully you've taken something from that, and I'll see you next time.